Hello, everyone. This is Eric Pennington, and welcome to the Spirit of EQ podcast. We're glad that you've tuned in. A few things we wanted to tell you at the beginning of the show, and that's this podcast was created to be a tool to help you, primarily to discover and grow your EQ. Science and our own lived experiences confirm that the better we are at managing our emotions, the better we're going to be at making decisions, which leads to a better life. And that's something we all want. We're glad that you've taken out the time today to listen and hope that something that you hear will lead to a breakthrough. Hey, one last thing. We'd really appreciate a review on whichever platform you use to listen. And if you want to, leave some comments about what you heard today, as well as follow and subscribe. That way you won't miss a single episode as we continue this journey. And with that, the show begins. And joining me as always is Jeff East with the Spirit of EQ. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Doing great, Eric, and hope everyone else is. So, Jeff, today I wanted to kind of blend a little bit of the personal with the, I guess I would call it the um, the practical tool-oriented things that we do at Spirit of EQ. That sounds really good. Okay. Well, uh, by the look on your face, I can tell, oh, I wonder where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's pretty common for both of us when we're doing this. <laughs> yes, which gives me a lot of energy, by the way. So, me too. Uh, hopefully it'll be that way with this episode for you as well. All right. So um, I have really been thinking a lot about um, the authentic, the real version of who I am. And I've been doing a little bit of retro kind of reviewing about, well, what happened that I would be in a position where I'm kind of like rediscovering me, right? And, and I'm going to use uh, the term free spirit, right? And, and, and I'm not speaking about that in the sense of describing that, hey, this person is a free spirit. They do whatever they want to do. No, I'm talking about as a, as a connector to who we really are. Would unencumbered help? Yeah, that, that, that's really good too. Um, so here's where I'm going with it. So I believe, Jeff, like for me, and I, I, know, I think this has some commonality with a lot of people, when we come into this world, we come in as a free spirit. Because if you think about it, in childhood, you're kind of just doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Everything is interesting. Everything is worth exploring. You know, our imaginations are just wide open. And that makes sense, right? Discovery is at its height, mm -hmm. okay? And we go along in this wonderful world. And even, even and, and I experienced a lot of trauma as a child. And I'm sure there are people out there who have as well. But even despite that, there still it was a time of wonder, right? Every, you could find your times, even when things could be difficult, to like, oh, that's amazing. One of those examples for me. I had to be, man, I couldn't have been older than six, five or six years old, right? So it's, it's one of these chilly fall days, and I look up in the sky and the clouds, and I remember the clouds are moving. Mm. I had not, I didn't know that clouds moved. And I, I juxtaposed <laughs> myself on the ground. I laid on my back, and I just looked up into the sky, and I was like, oh, my gosh, the clouds are moving. They're moving. And I was like, wonder, right? Mm -hmm. And there are all kinds of examples of that. And then I think we come into that period of time, and for some people, and I know for me, it was around the age of 13, when you knew something was changing. You knew something was changing physically, mentally, emotionally, and you began to start to see things with a different view. That also correlates around the time that I started to hear those messages of, this is who you should be. This is how you should act. This is where you should live. This is what school you should go to. How limiting are those? Right. And as, that, as, as we know, Jeff, our personalities are being formed within this window of time that I'm describing. And then we move into adulthood. I heard something from Ian Cron, uh, the Enneagram uh, the Road Back to You is, is the book I'm thinking about. He, I also know he has a new book out that I hear is really good. I think it's called The Story of You. But anyway, he mentioned about when we move into the adult years, 
oftentimes we carry with us what we developed in our childhood years Mm -hmm. and our teen years. And that kind of makes sense. But think about it, Jeff. I just mentioned I had trauma, I had issues. I'm not alone in that. We all probably could trace that. And our personalities get formed. And that indicates we did that for survival. We did that to fit in. We did it to, to, to just to have order to life. But what he makes a great point about is that the danger in carrying that into the adult years is that it's not necessarily a true story in the adult years as it was when we were 10 years old. Now, for me, I did not have anyone stop me at 18 and say, hey, Eric, before you get off into this adult thing, you need to remember. (laughs) (laughs) No, I took with me my persona. And I found that free spirit that I was was fading more and more into the background. Not disappeared, not like, you know, gone, but just fading. Times I could see him, I knew he was there, but I was living my persona. Because remember all those messages of you should, you should, what you should. Would that be your assigned persona? In many ways, right? And you believe that that's the one you need. You, you might even carry it as a protective mechanism, right? I know for me, performance was a big deal. That was a big part of my persona. If I perform, then you will applaud. And if you applaud, that means you love me. Exactly. Right? Yes. Okay. So you're going through life. You're, you're, it's like a, all the world is a stage. I was a great actor, Jeff, especially <laughs> in the corporate world. But eventually my act was um how how do we say it it was um it it was <laughs> it was cut i don't know how they say that for broadway shows when they come to the end of their run maybe that's what it is end of the run yes right so i came to that end of the run and then i was left with about half of my life gone you were recast recast right <laughs> and i i had to start thinking about well well what now cuz i knew the persona thing was not working. I knew that it was not going to carry me. I began in that journey. I wanted to find that free spirit. Now, the consequences of what we do is when what maybe is who we really are has faded and faded and faded and faded. It takes a lot of work to find him again. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of that next part of my journey. I need to find him. Because that's who I should be. That's who I could have been all along, right? And I want the audience to understand something. This is not me saying regret, regret, regret. Because as you've used this from one of our partners, uh, Lynette Vave, right? It's that idea that, say it to me again, Jeff, about all the things in our lives. The reason you're where you're at in your life is because of all these things that happened before whether they're good or bad, yeah. and they all should be celebrated. There you go. That's the healthy <clears throat> part of it. So it's not a call to get rid of your personality because it's bad. Because I got to tell you guys, my personality that is drawn to performance is not a bad thing. It only becomes a bad thing when I let it dominate and drive my decisions and my direction, I may be better said. So, well, what do you do? I mean, you're on this search for you, right? Sounds really noble and glorious. It's not. It's very painful. Mm -hmm. Because, again, where you're at, regardless of good or bad, it all led you to this spot. Now, I'm very thankful as I look back because in, in many respects, I almost go, you know, I could have missed it. Because the messages, even after my end of my corporate career, were, oh, you can go back. Oh, you know, you just need to pivot. You know, you're, you're still well positioned. You still know a lot of people. All of that stuff was still coming into my ear. But I decided that my great pursuit needed to be to find that free spirit that had faded into the background from so long ago. Fast forward to when I met you and I met Jim and Lynette, Spirit of EQ, I found 
relationships and I found tools to really give me traction in that pursuit of finding that free spirit. And it just, it changed everything. It was truly a God send. Truly. Because I did find him. And just so everyone knows, because we don't deal in silver bullets here, Jeff. <laughs> you still have the old neural pathways. Oh, yeah. You still have the old personal personas. But you know what? Emotional intelligence has c- equipped me with tools to manage. I've got a, a question those. for you, Eric. All right. Question time. So was this a dramatic flash of lightning and thunder and... Things like that? Well, if we were making a movie for Disney, I'd probably say, of course, Jeff, it always <laughs> happens that way. Um, no. No, it was just, it was, it was the combination of hitting brick walls, running into detours, getting some success. I mean, it was just a blend. It was just, a, it was just you know, it's like a recipe. You know, there was some salt and there was some ginger. There was some olive oil, and there was some, you know, that kind of thing. So what would you tell our listeners that are looking for this or don't know they are looking for it? Well, um, you know, it's interesting you say that um, because um, nobody goes out looking for um, a fall. Nobody goes out looking for a crossroads. As a matter of fact, I would dare say in our culture, a lot of people want to avoid that. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like that, you know, when you know you're going to have to get a shot and, and you see the needle come out and you're, and you're kind of trying to prepare yourself because you know, at least in your head, it's going to really hurt and, and, you're, and you're preparing and all this. Or trying to talk yourself out of it. Whatever the case may be. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, it was the losing and the failing that were the catalyst to that, to to the discovery, to the, to the search. Um, and, um, I, I don't, I don't like suffering like anyone else. I'd, I'd love to have a, you know, a pain free life, (laughs) but I've lived long enough to realize that that's not how life lives. Life delivers and it just does. And some of it is understandable. Some of it is a mystery. Well, a pain-free life, I think, means you would never grow. Exactly, because I think there is a connection between them, Jeff. And I know for me, that's exactly what it was. It was that pain got my attention to pay attention to this free spirit that I let fade into the background. That, that quite frankly, was the thing, if, if you want to think about it, that's really who I am. That's really who I am. And fortunately, as, as we talked about the emotional intelligence piece, those tools, those competencies that our audience hears us talk about so often were the absolute go-tos for me. The, the ability to kind of go self-empathy. Hey, wait a minute, Eric. Who said you have to have it all done and be completed by a certain date? You don't have to. Stay committed, but don't beat your up because yourself up because it didn't happen within some arbitrary time frame. Consequential thinking. If I, if I make this stand now, how is that going to impact what's going to happen a month from now? I mean, these are, these are practical, everyday tools. And for me in this respect, it was I'm on a search. I got to find that free spirit. And when you find that free spirit, Jeff, then your position, because you've got these tools, and I'm going to talk about a couple other tools as well, um, that position you to live it out to where, where it's like, yeah, this is who I am. This is who I am. I show up wherever I go as I am. That's what happens. Even with the times when I'm tempted, even with the times when I fail at it, even when the times people, I mean, all of the different stuff that can happen along the way. How much courage does it take to do that? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the romantic 
side of when we use the term courage, because I think we, we interpret that to mean like they scaled the mountain, they mm-hmm. defeated the dragon, they, they, they stood up to the, to the bully, whatever. And, and that has its place. Mm-hmm. My courage came from the daunting reality of the crossroads. If you do not do this, Eric, you will be like those people that Thoreau talked about. And this quote always haunts me when I think of it. The mass of men and women lead lives of quiet desperation. That's also in a Pink Floyd song. Well, of course, there has to be a musical reference. Yes. Thank you for that, Time. by the way. <laughs> right? So that was my thing. I, I was like, I got a decision to make here. Uh, because I could very well become that person who just let that free spirit fade and fade and fade. There is a point where it can be too late, Jeff. We know that. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there, there are people who are they were they're willing to let it go. Now, in the work that we do, and that's what gives me so much energy about the work we do. I don't want anyone to be in that place. I'd like them to hear what I'm talking about today with you and go, okay, that that's, yeah, yeah, that, that resonates that, you know, I was just talking to this friend of mine, or I, I was reading this book, something that gives people that encouragement that it is worth all the pain. It's worth making a stand. It's worth moving forward. So one of the things I was going to mention to you is, is about this idea of, um, I, I mentioned about emotional intelligence mm-hmm. and the tools and the competencies. Um, I know at the beginning when I used the persona thing, it almost cast it in a negative light, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not. It, it, yes, it was formed in a window of time that is, is full of all kinds of fault and, you know, fallen situations, parents that didn't do what they said they were going to do, teachers that respond, you know, all the stuff. It's an imperfect world. We just have to accept that. But we do have a choice. That's the beautiful thing. We have autonomy here. Mm -hmm. We can, again, to our adult years, ask ourselves, I have an issue with X. Maybe it's anger, right, Jeff? You're just angry. You're angry at the littlest thing. You can stop and ask yourself, okay, is that anger appropriate for now? Do you really need to be that angry? You can do that, Jeff. Mm-hmm. That's not a, I mean, there's nothing says that if you're, if you're at 35, 40, 50, 60 years old, you can stop and go, wait a minute. Is this anger because my mom continually bugged me about my education? Is that true now? Is that, and, and I'm stealing some from Ian Cron because he articulates it much better than I in that regard. It's like, is the story of now the same as the story of then? Mm-hmm. I, Jeff, from my own experience, no, it's not. No. And the courage is to be able to say, it's not. I don't, I don't need to be angry. That it, it doesn't help me. It hasn't served me. It hasn't produced great things in my life. So you know what? It may not happen overnight. I may need to get some help, but I need to stop. That's autonomy, man. Anybody can do that today, Mm -hmm. right now. Exactly. So the persona thing, it's not all bad, but I do believe the one thing that really helped me a lot was the exploration through the Enneagram. And we've talked about the Enneagram here on the show. You and I have talked about it personally Mm -hmm. one-on-one. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. I, I am a big fan of Ian Cron. He's not the only one who's involved in that work, but it is a powerful exploration. And I think that has helped me tremendously because it helped me recognize some of those things that are associated with my personality that I developed that really were, again, applied to then, but not true for now. Now, I also will tell you, because I want to I wanted to make sure that I don't uh, give persona a bad name, is that it also taught me about some of the wonderful things that can come out of the personality that I developed. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, for people that aren't familiar with the Enneagram, um, Ian Cron, uh, 
Russo, I can't think of his first name, but they talk about healthy, unhealthy, and then mm-hmm. average. Yeah. And it's the healthy part that you're looking for. Yes, exactly. Um, you, you, and, and to our point earlier, I am still tempted by the unhealthy side of my personality. Mm-hmm. You know, my personality, there is a sense of there's something missing. That, that can be a common part of my personality. Now, I've got to stop and pay attention. I call upon my tools in my emotional intelligence toolbox, the competencies, mm-hmm. to help me navigate. Is this appropriate? Is this, is this the time to feel like something is missing? No, there could be a situation where it's true. It makes total sense, right? I mean, Jeff, in the work that we do, I could say, you know, Jeff, if, if we just had more technology to deliver to people right where they're at, there's something missing in our delivery. That, that could be good because it could spawn innovation, right? It could spawn us, well, maybe we should look at but if I just call you up one day and say, Jeff, I don't know. I just, something's missing from the work we do. I don't feel fulfilled. And, you know, the, it always seems like things are just beyond my grasp. Jeff, you'd probably say to me, Eric, where's that coming from? Or I would go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to other people? Yeah, right. And that's, that's a great point. Because we're not talking about we don't live in vacuums, mm-hmm. right? And I, 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 I use those terms around it's a journey of self-knowledge here with the persona. And the Enneagram has been a, a tremendous tool to help me in there. And then the last tool that's been super important for me has been spiritual intelligence. Um, Can you unwrap that a little bit for, for our listeners that aren't familiar with that? Yeah. Um, so – uh, practically speaking, um, we have a tool. Uh, we call it the SEQ, but it's basically short for spiritual emotional intelligence. There is research out there. There, there are people who will establish that the spiritual side of us lies on the same side of the brain as the emotional side. Um, and I believe in my experience, and I want to speak from an experiential perspective, it helped me it validated this idea of my, of the free spirit. Do you now, know what I mean? This isn't a religious thing. You're oh talking no no no, no not at all. Uh, and I'll have to hold my fire. Actually, Jeff, I think religion has been the culprit in keeping <laughs> me from finding the free spirit. <laughs> not the only one. <laughs> okay. Now, hear me out. <laughs> For those of you out there who may be attending a church or a synagogue, or a temple that's really helping you and you really like the, the community of it, this is not my indictment for all things religion. I'm just going to tell you that my faith walk is all about relationship, not about what time you arrived, how many chapters you read, how often you prayed, all the laundry list of things. For me, that was an inhibitor. Mm-hmm. So I have to tell you, no, Jeff, it is not about religion. Um, It could mean, it could be a tool, and it was for me, to grow closer to God. To your, whatever your idea. I'm speaking purely for me. Yes. And I speak of God as someone, and Mm -hmm. I speak of as a person. Yes, it helped me. But the idea of it is not that first. It's first to say, where is the real Eric? Because at the end of the day, again, from my faith walk, what is it like if you show up as an as a counterfeit to your God? Mm-hmm. Please, someone, tell me, how does that work out? <laughs> it worked out terribly for me because there's a gap. There's this gap, Jeff. When we find that spirit, our spiritual, there's no gap anymore because it's like, yeah, I'm showing up as I really am. That's... Big. That was really big for me. The spiritual emotional intelligence piece really helped me. Again, it validated my search and then it helped further that search to get to finding that free spirit 
that was truly me. So it's those three things that I think have been strong catalysts, strong work, if you will, to get to that place. I'm going to stress to you again, Jeff, and I know you know this, but for the audience, this is not some I've arrived thing. It just means as I'm experiencing life, the good things, the bad things, the up things, the down things, I am showing up. I am. 20 years ago, Jeff, you would have had a version of me. And it would have been one that was driven by my persona in that window of time. So, what do, I, I'm sure it's got to be out there, right? Somebody's going to go, okay, so well, I, I, I like the sound of that. I'd like to learn more. I'd like to do some of that. What would you recommend? What are some tips? Because I know we do that often, Jeff. But I'm going to put you on the spot. Somebody's in that place, right? Mm-hmm. Where maybe they're at a crossroads. Jeff, I'm at a crossroads. What do I do? I know you're going to ask some questions to further understand what that means to them. Mm-hmm. But in light of what we've been talking about today, what would you say to them as far as maybe some tips? I think one of the first things that I would ask of them is to approach this with curiosity. If you're not wanting to know more about why you're there, you're never going to be able to move ahead. So approach it with a lot of questions. Mm. Some of the questions you'll get answers right away. Some of the questions maybe you'll never get, but you know, ask yourself the questions uh, why am I feeling like this? You know, go back to your emotional literacy. Why do I feel like I'm at this crossroads? Yeah. What what result am I getting that I don't want to get? You know, I'm going to come back a little bit to what you're saying about curiosity and those questions. I know one thing that kind of hindered my journey a bit. And this was even within, um, because it, it is, it was kind of a battle with my persona uh, when even after coming on board with Spirit of EQ and the work that we do and my getting access to these tools mm-hmm. is we need to linger a little bit longer with the question. Mm-hmm. I had the habit of, okay, Jeff, what do I do? And Jeff <laughs> says, well, I think you should spend some time and be curious. I would walk away going, okay, all right, I can be curious. Um, uh, how long? I, you know, it's probably going to take about a, two, a month, two months, maybe three, okay? And then I'm, I'm going to get the – I was so focused on wanting to get to the answer. <laughs> and what I didn't understand, and it's okay because I applied some self-empathy when I realized, Eric, it's not about getting to the answer. It's about the in-between. It's about what you discover after that question has had time – to kind of settle in, right? And and as you're you're doing that, you you for me anyway, you tend to go, I may never get the whole answer because life is not static. Yeah. You know, what happens to me today is going to be influenced what happens to me tomorrow and the day after. So it's it's a continuum. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I like that too, Jeff. And it, and it was tough for me to accept the mystery. Your persona was being curious. <laughs> right. Okay. So think about it in terms of, I know for me, one of the great breakthroughs, just even for just peace of mind, I can be okay with mystery mm-hmm. and the unknown. I can be okay that I may never have an answer for it. I don't have to have an answer in order for things to be okay. And and what you find is, at least for me again, your your questions are going to change. As you go down this road, you go, okay, that question I was asking before is not the question I really need to be asking. You know, is it important for me though that everybody thinks I'm Superman? That's not the question now. The question is, is it important for me, for people to know that I'll be there for them? Mm. You know, that's an example of how these questions can change. That first question, 
will go away if you answer that second question. Yeah, yeah. And I I think, you know, one of the things that was very clear to me when I was probably getting to that um, crossroads was I knew it wasn't right. I, I mean, I could feel it in my gut. I didn't have anything I could point to to say, well, this is the replacement. Um, I was a little more willing at that time to kind of go, well, what is this? What is going on? And I think that though it may feel strange to you um, at, at the beginning, um, it it really is worth continuing through, lingering a little longer with the question. Um, I've always felt that it was important in our times, Jeff, when we're on this show to to kind of forewarn people about these neural pathways. <laughs> and and I know to some it would be like, oh, my gosh, they're going to talk about neural pathways again. That's because um, we struggle with them all the time. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's a commonality, right, to all humans. And not that all humans struggle with them. Some people are on autopilot. I get that. But I think, Jeff, as people are thinking about making a decision to make a change, mm-hmm. it would be healthy for them to understand that you have built some neural pathways. And there's a term, I think it's called um, limbic friction, I think. Mm-hmm which kind of describes this idea that it's when your brain is resisting the change you're wanting to make. Um, And Andrew Huberman, for our audience, is a brilliant individual um, who you would, it would very worthwhile for you to check him out. He talks a bit about this in, uh, in multiple settings. I'm thinking of one particular episode of his podcast about this idea about when that happens and when it typically is most forceful in a given day of your life, right? You know, morning, afternoon, evening type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, and it's one of the things that I did as well, is to kind of do a little bit of research around how your brain works and about how your brain responds to, because what I'd hate to see, and I don't have any great credit I can give to myself back, I don't know, 15 years ago, but there is a tendency, if you're not careful, you might decide it's not worth the fight. It's not worth mm-hmm. the effort. It's not worth he continuing on. I just want to encourage people. More than likely, when that's happening, it's just that limbic friction. It's, the, it's your brain saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not how we do it. That's not what we do. Thoughts about the neural pathways, and then I'll kind of close this no, out. No, I, I agree that the neural pathways are important. And something I just thought of. Seek out someone that is not necessarily someone that is going to counsel you, but someone to observe. Somebody that you see is presenting their true person and see how they go about it. Mm. Maybe ask them some questions. They may, you know, if they're truly a healthy one, they may not even know they're doing it. But when you see somebody that you look at them and you go, that's the real person, pay attention to them. That's a great observation too, Jeff, in as much as that seeking out someone in your life, right? That is, you know, by all appearances, I mean, you, 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 you certainly probably will ask them, okay, hey, you seem like you're very authentic. Is it? And how did you do it? What, what, what are you doing? How do you, how do you some encourage whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's a great tip. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, how spirit of EQ is is using these, I call them the three of emotional intelligence, spiritual emotional intelligence, and persona work. Um, we're working on putting together um, sort of a suite of experiences, and that'll include assessments and coaching and cohorts and such that will combine those three. We're not totally there yet uh, with the package, if you will. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Jeff, as these things started coming to me and it's starting to crystallize for me that this is how, this is how it happened, Eric. That's what kind of, begin, that was the beginning of me kind of going, well, how do we put this together so that individuals, groups, organizations can go down this road too? 
Mm-hmm. And I want to stress to everyone out there, if you're a business owner, if you're, you're a high-level, senior-level leader, this is not just about feel good. Because I would just ask you one question around your customer. What's the experience your customer will have with the true, authentic person versus the version or persona driven person. You know, and I think it goes one step further because I believe if you have a, a an organization that is practicing that, what experience do you expect from the true authentic organization? And that's a great that's a great way to lift that up even further. And and I would say I've always been and still am a believer that individual transformation happens before corporate transformation, mm-hmm. right? But think of when you do that, Jeff. Think of an organization that they understand who they are, why they're doing what they do, and realizing that there may not be – it may not be for everyone. Mm-hmm. But they're being true to that mission. They're being, it's, it's not just words on a page that sits on a wall somewhere, right? Um, so I wanted to throw that in there because I don't want anyone to think that it's only about the personal growth. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's pretty clear. People who are, comp- should we say, when they find their free spirit, they, it will be a change maker. It, 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 will, it will change the dynamic of the interactions, as you described with, you know, as an organization, team upon team. And it might even put you in a position, quite frankly, where you may go, you know what? I don't. I'm not supposed to be in finance. Yeah, you. you yeah, it, I was just thinking the same thing. You may go. The company that I'm working for is great, but my my free spirit. This is not what my free spirit wants to do with my life. I want to do this. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, and it could be. You can do that inside of the same company you're working yeah. with, because I think leaders again specifically to the senior leaders, they struggle with the performance and the engagement thing. And I think one of the reasons why that happens is because you may have people who are doing things and that that's not a fit. I'm not here to give, you know, <laughs> this is what you do to organize your company. This is not an episode on organizational development. What I'm saying is there is tremendous power the more that your people become who they really are. <laughs> You, I've spent a lot of time in church leadership of one kind or another, uh-huh. and one of the things that a church does, and I know businesses do it too, you have a, a member come into your church, and he's a finance person. So where do you put him All right. on the finance committee? Yep. That's not why he's maybe, – maybe he wants to teach second grade Sunday school. Yeah. That's who his true person is. So yeah. once once th- this true persona starts coming out, then things happen. Yeah, that healthy version, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and and I just have to say, you know, you, you mentioned that that reality, um, and I'm so glad that people like Ian Cron and their work uh, and others, um, you know, the healthy side of it blended with all the things we've talked about in the episode today, Mm -hmm. it leads to furtherance. It leads to you being, again, becoming that truly who you are, who you really are. That's when you're effective. That's when you're effective. Jeff, as always, it's great to be with you. Audience, we appreciate you tuning in. We look forward to the next time we're together. Take care. Thank you, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Eric Pennington with The Spirit of EQ. I'm not introducing a new episode today. I'm here to tell you some things that might help you. Jeff, you're with me as always. So yes. how do people get in touch with us? Well, the best way is just send us an email at info at spiritofeq.com. That's awesome. Jeff, I was also thinking about reviews, and I'm notoriously bad at asking for them. So reviews on all of the platforms wherever you get your podcasts yes. you think that'd be good i think that would be great because one that will help us learn how to make better ones and it's always good for us so to we're, hear. we're not the perfect podcast host we're close okay but, all right but, but not, still not totally we want perfect. your feedback we want your feedback 
but it'll it also might uh, let us know a new subject hey we need to dig deeper into that yeah. so let us know what you think cool we really appreciate that as always too there is social media linkedin facebook and we also have a youtube channel those also have mechanisms or, or options for you to be able to leave a comment a like or those kind of things just want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with us right jeff right we appreciate you all thank you once again, we really appreciate you tuning in today. One of the things that Jeff and I want to bring to your attention as well is that when we created this podcast, it was not intended to take the place of a clinician. In other words, if you find yourself in a place where there's something deeper going on or something that you cannot solve on your own, we do recommend that you reach out to a clinician of some sort. This podcast is purely opinion-based and it is rooted in the desire to help you along your path in whatever way we can. However, it is never going to replace, nor should it ever be looked at as a replacement for clinical help in any way. Thanks again for tuning in.